Hello and welcome back everybody to the Food Build Factory, where this time we are going to take a look at the Hubologist. That's the girl you can see on screen right now. And as always, I'm going to show you some gameplay in the first part of the video, and in the second part of the video we're going to take a look at... The... Okay, this is new. Uh, at the perks, the mutations and everything else you need to know. This never happened before, I'm not sure why this dog here was so perceptive of our presence but okay well we're going to see now what this character is going to be about um, on a very base level we're going to play as a guerrilla build utilizing vets and vet criticals in order to do our damage but the twist about this character it's nothing fantastic or anything but what I wanted to do this time around is I basically wanted to make a build as good as possible with just tools that the game gives you. Now, obviously, basically every build you do is something with tools that the game gives you. So, I wasn't quite sure how to how to uh, call out this character. I initially even thought to make it into my no RNG series, but that wouldn't be quite fitting. And I am already uh, kind of. Uh, unlucky here with Grim Reaper Sprint, but trust me, uh, stick with me, the build is not bad. Um, that was just really unlucky behavior here. Now, what I mean by all of this is that the game has a bit of a problem with giving you meaningful rewards, in my opinion. So, if you're making a build, you either have to live with utilizing mostly non-legendary equipment, or uh, have to grind or get lucky with legendary drops. This build here uses first and foremost secret service armor, which is just not easy to get, but straightforward to get. That's the main point here. You have a certain goal that you're working your way up to, meaning you want to grind your uh, gold bullion together, grind some legendary scripts, buy modules, and then you can craft your set of armor. And what I did here was, I basically just uh, crafted every single limb one time. Uh, with the exception of the torso, because that's the one I had for the longest time. So I crafted two or three until I had a Vanguard's piece, which I was happy with. But all of the other pieces are basically just what I got on my first try. Simply to show off that the Secret Service armor is just a very good armor uh, set. I see we have a challenge here, by the way. So on this occasion I maybe do some Psycho tests, just to give us a little edge here. But will be a good display for our character. Now one thing I want to do here is I want to be well hydrated simply so we can have a bit more AP refresh because as I said usually what I'm doing is I'm trying to get some armor pieces that have uh, better AP refresh on them but yeah I just crafted a few of them so I have to rely on helping myself to a bit more uh, AP refresh other way. And that's by being well hydrated. But as you can see here, as long as we have AP to our means, we can definitely dish out some respectable damage here. So a full round of vets, combined with all the crits that we're getting, that basically does a whole good job. Now, a level 100 legendary sheep squatch is definitely one of the more tougher enemies that you can face in overall travel. Like, I'd argue that this is even one of the tankiest enemies, unless you're facing something like Earl, Earl Williams. Not quite sure why we're so slowly here. Bit of a cursed video, I see. But, yeah, let's see if it gets better. And as you can see here, we're facing level 75 Super Mutants, which are quite strong enemies, but we do have relatively little uh, problems here. And... Back to our main topic, so mm, basically the video was here to show off how far you can get with simply using a set of uh, secret service armor and the weapon we are utilizing is the Slugbuster. Now the Slugbuster is definitely one of my, if not my favorite quest reward in this whole game. Simply because it's very versatile, it's definitely a weapon that works well. All the um, legendary effects work together very well. It even has a hidden uh, little legendary effect that very little people seem to be aware of. And 
it has a relatively powerful base weapon. It definitely tackles some of the weak points of the plasma uh, gun or plasma rifle. So overall, I feel like this is just a quest reward that's very well put together uh, compared to so many others that are just out of trash. Um, by the way, I'm a bit stupid because I, I just wanted to say that because we were already fighting the uh, Sheep Squatch, we were not going to face the Scorch Beast on this occasion, but yeah, I'm, I think we are already here, so yeah, well, might as well just do it. So as you can see here, in terms of DPS, we don't really have a problem. We can definitely dish out a lot of damage. And the only thing that might be a little bit off-putting to this build for some people is that we are using prime ammo. Now this is something I tend to do relatively often when I'm using uh, plasma weaponry or even laser weaponry. Um, the thing is, I feel like on energy weapons, priming them is definitely a good choice. It makes ammo, for me at least, easier to uh, obtain because buying some flux is no problem whatsoever. Uh, I mean you can easily get a few K caps and just buy something like 20 cobalt flux which you need in order to craft ultracite plasma cartridges and combining that with all the good uh, crafting perks you can get around 500 um, plasma cartridges per um, per craft. So that's definitely very efficient and another thing is you can pretty easily farm um, the ammunition at daily ops which is something I often say in my videos and this is one of the weapons where it definitely works. The only thing is that over time the uh, the ammo in the goo piles tends to get away, um, tends to be uh, to disappear so what you want to do is you want to definitely um, loot them as soon as you kill them so you want to do that on a on an occasion where you're not really trying to really finish the, the daily op in order to get rewards or something but you rather want to just do it to farm the stims at uh, the, the ammunition this one here was left alive I think we just yeah one more shot and we would have taken him down but overall you can see we are quite tanky after all something like an assaultron if he focuses his laser beam on you that's definitely something that can tear you apart uh, actually on a lot of my characters that would easily melt me but on this occasion simply because the armor is relatively good you don't really have a problem now another thing about a secret service armor is which I really like it just doesn't break fast it, it really has a good condition it holds for a long time which is something I really appreciate because that's something that I find really tedious repairing armor is one of the most tedious things in this game and yeah not having to worry all that much about it it's definitely a nice change of things for once now in terms of range you're kinda limited so you really wanna stick a little bit uh, closer to your enemies but as I said you are relatively tanky so you shouldn't have a big problem with that so as you can see here even though they oh, okay our weapon broke now we do have one backup weapon but I'm going to repair the weapon relatively soon this is a medic's uh, laser pistol so not really a super good weapon but as you see it can do the job as well um, it, it really gets worse when you're fighting uh, something like a boss um, for example, the Sheep Squatch, yeah, that would have taken ages with the uh, um, Medic's Laser Pistol. But, overall, we were doing quite fine. And the condition is something I wanted to touch on later in the game, but uh, since the weapon broke already, um, I might as well address it at this point. Currently, it loses way too much uh, condition. It breaks very fast. Now, if this would be normal case, I would definitely not recommend you using the weapon um, because it is very tedious however uh, that's not usually the case it's a bug um, Fessa even as far as I know uh, already addressed it and said they're looking into it so currently the condition system is a bit bugged so keep that in mind um, the condition of the weapon will be way better uh, in a few days or weeks or whatever so it's definitely usable. I used this build before uh, I before the patch that broke the durability 
And I can confidently say that you don't have a trouble repairing that weapon. Now sometimes like this I feel the damage was a little bugged. Some of the um, hits didn't really register, but ultimately not a big problem for us. Now one thing worth mentioning is that even though I said I just crafted uh, one limp each for the armor, uh, in a twisted turn of events I actually got some relatively good armor pieces, so um, it's definitely possible that you get way worse results. However, since you can directly craft the pieces you want, it shouldn't take long until you get at least a decent set. Okay, someone behind us is left, I feel like. Well, must have overheard something there. Won't be bothered too much. Um, now, this is a bit of a part where I can talk about the idea of the build in terms of the aesthetics and everything, um, the hubologist. Now, I'm sure most of you will already know, but the hubologists are kind of a faction in the Fallout universe. Um, they are, I think you can already tell from the name, loosely based on the Scientologist uh, religion that we have in our real world. Um, as far as I know, at least, it is uh, based upon this. And they made an appearance in either Fallout 1 or 2, I think. I never played those games, but I'm pretty sure um, they were... They even played a part in the main quest, I think. Um, they were the ones that helped you repair the tanker, if I'm correct. I could be wrong though. Anyways, where I'm sure um, they were appearing is in Fallout 4, in the Nuka World DLC. And they basically try to... Their religion says they want to go to space and are going to be rescued by aliens, I think. So overall, pretty weird. Uh, kind of people, but I always liked them and they were running around in kind of makeshift radiation suits. They didn't really have any radiation resistance, but um, it was this patched coats with duct tape all over it and um, basically the main piece that we are wearing as a headpiece, the wrap cap, that pretty much fits the aesthetic very well. Uh, in terms of armor, it's kind of hard to recreate them. Now, one thing that would probably work is the tethered field uh, jacket. Another thing that could work is um, the leather coat combined with the with the red cap, I think. But yeah, that's about it. There's not a lot of options. I found that this year Secret Service armor fit the fitted the whole theme relatively well and give us this kind of heavy explorer vibe. So you're basically kind of a elitist from the hubologist. That makes sense. Bit of a premature reload here. Uh, something that happens very often when I'm um, using uh, guerrilla weapons, but it's not, not a big deal. And now we're going to clear the front yard here, but I think then we'll call it a video. As you can see, this is where the weapon really shines, these relatively narrow battle scenarios with relatively easy to kill enemies. So, you basically have to get a little bit lucky with Grim Reaper Sprint, that's the whole idea here. So you're not running out of uh, AP, but you're getting a good bit of uh, extra damage from guns, uh, Gun Fu. What you can do is you can damage your enemies a little bit with free aim and then kill them with that. In, order, in hopes that you're getting um, your AP back, but didn't really work out here. The good thing is, you can always retreat with even a little bit of, of uh, AP. You can do a jump and the, uh, another thrust from your jetpack here, which is kind of cool. I really like it. It's not as much of a game changer, though, in my opinion, as people make it out sometimes. Talking about the jetpack here. We're also having a Chronotron uh, backpack, by the way. Just, yeah, looks like some... Neurodyne detector or something. And yeah, I think that went relatively smooth. The whole video was pretty good. Um, this is just a little fun project I wanted to make. So nothing really crazy or anything or super in-depth, but it was about time I did another guerrilla build, by the way, because yeah, I slowly want to revisit all the classes I already did um, now with my better recording uh, quality. 
and yeah I figured this was a good choice here so overall that was the gameplay uh, in terms of the hopologist and I hope you did enjoy it so far and now we're going to take a look at the rest of the build starting off with the mutations uh, other than the uh, build we had earlier today this year it's pretty much on point with what I want to have. There's not a lot that's unnecessary or anything, but still it's quite similar. So Adrenal Reaction, you see it's always the same. Adrenal Reaction, use it or don't, unless you have a bloody build, obvious, then, uh, obviously then you should definitely have it. But on this occasion, yeah, we, ha we have Class Freak, so a little bit less max HP, 12 less HP, that's not a whole lot. And getting more damage when we are damaged, that's nice to have. In terms of bird bones, we do have agility, um, which is very nice for our wets usage. So we do have more action points, and the reduced fall speed really helps, especially when you're using jetpacks, so you don't hurt yourself that easily. Other than that, I really tend to have no big problem with fall damage. But yeah, you could hope for uh, two pieces with the acrobats effect and reduce that fall damage. Then we have eagle eyes, very very important uh, mutation for this per, uh, for this build. Extra perception, obviously nice for better hit chance, but more importantly, we are focused on doing bad crit, and therefore, 25% extra crit damage, that's nice to have. Uh, definitely gives us a noticeable boost. Now, Egghead is just there to give us more intelligence, so we can just um, farm XP easier. Um, we don't have a lot of base uh, intelligence, and we do have a debuff from a bit of a debuff from marsupials. So, yeah, overall, we're in a good place when it comes to intelligence due to egghead, and a little bit less endurance and strength doesn't hurt us all that much. Now, that brings us to the next point here: marsupial, extra carry weight, jump height. Pretty straightforward. On this occasion, the jump height synergizes very well with the jetpack since you can just use your jump, and at the peak of your jump, you then use the jetpack. So you can get even a little bit higher. And lastly, we do a speed demon. Faster movement speed is obviously nice, and faster reload speed, pretty much the same. We're reloading relatively often with this weapon, so having faster reload speed, definitely a good idea here. And then you can see we are still well hydrated for 25% extra AP regen, which is something I would recommend to do, because we had to make some sacrifices here and there, and I don't have as much AP refresh due to perks as I usually try to have. Now, that gets us over to our uh, equipment. Here it is, the Neurodyne Blaster. Um, as I said during the video, I just renamed this weapon here. It's actually the Slug Buster, which you can get from the um, quest line uh, when you're following the crater quest line you have to do some things right so if you really want to have this weapon and don't have access to it try to look up a guide online how to get it the slug buster or try to serve a hop a little bit I often see this weapon in uh, player vending machines and what it does is it has the anti-armor effect which is first and foremost very nice it's a good all-rounder um, you never can go wrong with anti-armor in my opinion then you do have better vets crits, which works very well since we're using vets a lot here. And even more vets crit damage is nice. And then we have reduced weight, which, give or take, this is actually good. As you can see here, even with our mods, we do have a weight of 1.2 pounds, which is very little. So you can easily carry this around. And as I mentioned during the video, there's actually a fourth hidden effect that's never stated on the weapon. And I think it's a bit unintuitive that they... Um, didn't use that effect rather than reduced weight because the reduced weight is something you would see. Now the effect the weapon has that isn't shown is less vet cost which you only notice if you know that it's there. Um, it's a bit hard you wouldn't just get around this weapon in my opinion and compare it to another uh, alien uh, another plasma weapon that you do have on your hands and see that the uh, AP usage is different. But it's definitely a perk I want on every... Yeah, as, as soon as I use vets with a plasma weapon, I do want less vets cost. The plasma weaponry definitely isn't the most vet sufficient uh, weaponry in the game. So less vets AP cost, that's definitely nice. I personally didn't know about this hidden effect for the longest while. Um, it definitely took me a while to notice and I only knew due to a, a Reddit post and yeah, after that I researched a little bit and it seems to be accurate. So anyways, a lot of talk for nothing, but yeah, 
that's the weapon you probably already know, Slugbuster. So, nothing out of the ordinary here. Then we go over to our equipment. This is the Secret Service, uh, one of the arms. It's an autostim piece with extra agility, which is nice, and ammo weight reduction, also pretty nice. Then we have one with the Vanguard's effect and a bit more agility. This one here is a troubleshooter's piece, which is nice to have. Troubleshooters reduces damage from robots. Robots tend to be pretty much one of the tougher enemies you can face, so definitely nice to have reduced damage from them. Definitely helped us when we were fighting the uh, Soltron. Then we do have a Zealot's piece here, which reduces damage from Scorch, which is also nice, with a Cavalier piece and Poison Resistance, so overall working together pretty low, uh, pretty good. And then we have an Unyielding piece, with extra disease resistance and chem weight reduction. So you can see we have a lot of weight reduction here, so except for two pieces, everyone has weight reduction in different departments, which works very well for us. But that's about it in terms of equipment. As, you, as I saw, uh, said, nothing too crazy, nothing bad either though. And now on to our perks. We do have 5 uh, strength, boosted a little bit by uh, legendary strength, but we will get to that. Um, we do use Bandolier and Blocker. Now Bandolier, obviously, if you want to use this build um, with only energy weapons, then Bandolier has no place here. It's just uh, that I carry a lot of um, ballistic weaponry, uh, ammo with me so i have to take bandolier here um definitely not necessary though if you tend to just use uh energy weapons so keep that in mind and blocker this is the perk i would definitely recommend in strength yeah it simply renders enemies to be way more ineffective against you if they are melee enemies think about mutant hounds my alerts and so on Yao Guai, they can really um, be a pain in the ass, and due to block up, you basically cut their damage in half. Like 45% is a lot. On to perception here, we do have tank killer, then we do have concentrated fire, exterminator, and glow sight. So, first and foremost, the most important one here, in my opinion, is tank killer, more armor penetration, and a stagger chance, which nowadays works for pistols, as it is uh, explained in the title card. So, yeah, tank killer must have choice for this uh, here build. Then we do have concentrated fire. Rank 1 would be enough, but since we wanted to have relatively high perception anyways, I thought rank 3 wouldn't hurt either. Then we do have exterminator and glow side. Those are relatively uh, situational. Um, I said it in a few videos so far, but I like to use those perks when I'm doing gunslingers or guerrilla builds. Because, as I said just a few seconds ago, I wanted to have high perception in order to uh, target weak spots. So, I have to fill in those uh, blank spots. And those two perks really work nice. Now, Exterminator is especially useful if you're fighting something like a Myler Queen, which just happens. And if you do that, you really see a big difference here in damage. It's really helpful. And in terms of glow side, this is just something I don't feel like glowing enemies tend to be all that uh, all that dangerous usually. But on the other hand, they are relatively plentiful. There are quite some events where you have glowing mole miners and so on, so you definitely see a good bit of use out of that perk. And on to endurance, we do have life giver at rank four here. We do have fireproof at rank three. And as you can see, that makes 7 points. I do have an Endurance of 9, because I quickly switched in uh, Legendary Endurance. So keep in mind, you had, you could have um, 2 more uh, perk points to spend here, but there's nothing you desperately need. Now, I would go with something like um, Chem Fiend or so on, if you want to use Chems every now and then. So there's definitely something you can do here, but you can just reduce your Endurance. So this was just to give me a little bit more tankiness. Keep in mind, two more uh, perk points to fill here. Then we have Charisma at 7, with Lone Wanderer at rank 4 for extra AP refresh, which is very important for our character here. And then we have 20% less damage overall when we're not in a team, which we aren't, solo build. So definitely a nice combination of, uh, of effects here that are useful to us, and Tenderizer is just way more damage. Like, 10% multiplicative damage to this build is very important. Then. We go over to Intelligence, 
6 intelligence, as you saw though, we boost that with Egghead, so we still get relatively good experience. And batteries included, this one is very obvious and very important on this situation because ultracite plasma cartridges are fucking heavy. Like, they weigh a ton and without batteries included, I just don't think you you can carry the burden, to be honest. Like, you definitely want to have batteries included here. First aid, relatively simple. Give us a little bit more, more survivability. After all, we're not a stealth build or anything, so we do get hit, and if we're having a tougher fight, yeah, it's just easy to have one stim pack healing you all the way up. Um, I know a lot of people just find stim pack so abundant that they don't want to bother with first aid, which I can compl uh, completely understand. I mean, on this character, I have, uh, I think, a thousand stim packs or something, which are slowly really, really starting to weigh me down, but. I just don't like to spam the vets, uh, spam the Stimpak button all the time, so therefore, yeah, first aid is here. Otherwise, you can go with whatever you like, though. Agility, <coughs> one of our most important stats here. First and foremost, we do have our Guerrilla perks here, which boosts our damage, so they take up 9 points already. Then we have rank 2 of Action Girl, because we want to have rank 1 of Gun Fu, so Rank 1 of Gunfu is just there to give us basically the function of switching uh, automatically to another target. But even then, 10% extra uh, damage to the next target is noticeable and makes for a nice effect. As I said, Rank 2 Action Boy, uh, Action Girl, just a, yet another bit of action point refresh. You saw when we were fighting the, uh, um, the, sorry, the Sheep Squatch, the legendary one. Uh, we were constantly running out of AP, but we were refreshing it relatively fast, so we had just some 10 second periods in between where we had to wait for our AP to come back due to Action Boy, uh, Action Girl, Wanderer and being well hydrated. And lastly, we do have White Knight, just to double down on what I said about the Secret Service armor. It really holds for a long time, so you can definitely live without White Knight. Um, but Ultimately, I found that, yeah, I'm using Adrenaline a lot and I just wanted to for once not use it. And other than that, there wasn't a whole lot of use here, so I went for White Knight, but feel free to go for whatever you like here. I just found it too convenient to not use it on this occasion. And lastly, we do have Luck. Rank 2 storage genes, pretty straightforward. I don't think I have a single build with the exception of one. Yeah, one single build I do have, which doesn't have storage genes. Other than that, it's always there, just to keep your mutations. Then we do have Grim Reaper Sprint, Critical Savvy, and Better Criticals. Now, this is basically the the core combination of perks you want to have on a critical build, in my opinion. Those are the most effective ones. Now, Grim Reaper Sprint got just giving you the chance to automatically completely refill your AP bar when you kill an enemy. And as you saw during the video, most of the time this works well enough so you don't run out of AP. So it can happen every now and then, but it definitely wouldn't work or the build definitely wouldn't be so smooth without it. Then Critical Savvy and Better Criticals combine, they work just very well. Critical Savvy makes you only consume 55% of your critical meters, severely reducing the amount of hits you need until you have another crit ready uh, in our oca uh, occasion. That means that every third hit is a critical, which is nice. So there's there would be room for improvement, but only with another uh, third tertiary effect or getting your luck up to 33 or 34, I guess. So that's basically as good as it gets. And better criticals, just giving us yet another edge on our critical damage. And lastly, we do have class freak here. So we could use other things. The thing is, all our debuffs that are tripling us are nothing that affects our damage comp uh, or our fighting cap uh, capabilities. So we basically only have debuffs to um, strength, endurance and intelligence. Meaning that without class freak you wouldn't see a big difference in, in your damage or in your fighting capabilities. The only difference is convenience. You would have less carry weight, less XP and a bit less HP. So. You can live without it if you want, you can go with Bloody Mass or something else, or maybe even Ricochet to give you a little bit more tankiness, but 
the only, well, quick hands could be a sensible option here, but I ultimately went for class three just to be a bit more agile, a bit more, uh, have a bit more carry weight. So yeah, that's that. And now let's take a look at our legendary perks. As you can see here, we're only using legendary perks in order to boost our special stats. The first one is a bit unimpressive because we do have a base agility of 15, meaning all this perk here does is giving us yet a bit more uh, action points. Just a bit more VATS usage and so on, but that's it. Legendary Charisma, now we all know it doesn't um, increase the amount of perk points you can share, so if that's something you want to do, um, don't use Legendary Charisma, Use just boost up another, uh, uh, just reduce another perk and uh, increase that with a Legendary stat rather than using Legendary Charisma. However, I just use rank 1 here and I don't intend to share any uh, perk points anyways, so therefore Rank 1 is all that we have here, and it's Legendary Charisma. Then we do have Legendary Perception at Rank 2, Legendary Strength at Rank 2, Legendary Intelligence at Rank 5, and 2 Legendary Endurance. So, overall, you can see just a plain improvement on our perk points. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Now, I hope you did enjoy the video. No, we don't want to change appearance. Oh, that was a bit of a fuck up here, so... I actually want to get into the photo gallery just by seeing how far uh, above the uh, picture was here you can see how long I have this uh, build in the back burner I'm not quite sure but every time I wanted to make a video about it uh, something came in between anyways this was the hubologist I hope you enjoyed the videos guys and uh, the video guys and see you next time bye